تكملة للخلية اللي هي الشكل ده اللي احنا قلنا عليه اللي هو التاني احنا طبعا احنا قلنا هنتكلم عن ثلاث خلايا وهنتكلم عن عن الشكل الأول النهاردة بس قبل قبل ما اتكلم عايز اوريكم بس ايه الحط كده لو هتحط اتنين بس قصاد بعض تمام لو لو مش هتحط هتحط طبعا نوترال والسالب بعد كده نوترال والموجب تاني هتبقى دي موجب واتنين نوترال بعد كده دي سالب بعد كده اتنين نوترال واحدة موجب تاني هتضطر تخلي الوش كله ايه يجي لغاية المنتصف في وش بعضه وفي النص تدي مزدوج علشان يديك على الجنبين دي يعتبر هتشتغل شبه السماعة يعني اللي ايه اللي يشوفها يعني هتبقى شبه السماعة وكده شبه الطبق <تصفيق> وادي الاشكال ايه لو في اصغر خليهم على الحرف وفي النص الاصغر ده حطه في النص اللي هو هيبقى عليه الطرف السالب وبرضه هيبقى الموجب على الجنبين هتحط دول الصغير مين على كبير لان الشكل الهرم مهم هو بقول ان شاء الله في الشكل الثاني اللي هو الثالث يعتبر عند عند جو وطبعا الخلايا القمعيه مش هنتكلم على انها غاليه ومتعبه ومش هتلاقي حد يظبطها لك لان اللحام المفروض تصنفره المفروض الخلايا ما يبقاش فيها اي تعرجات نهائي وتبقى معموله من ستانلس بيلمع شايني شايني ده مهم للمجال المغناطيسي واللي شاف معانا الفيديو اللي فات بتاع اشكال الكباستورات الفيديو اللي فات ده بيشرح عن اشكال ازاي اشحن الطاقه وازاي الكباستور بيلم ويفرغ وايه الماتيريال اللي تعتبر احسن ماتيريال تستخدم فيها ده كله ده ان شاء الله هنشرحه بالتفصيل على قناه ممرات باذن الله احنا قلنا ان القناه هنا بتاعه البلوجات تمام نيجي بقى للشكل الثاني الشكل الاول قصدي الشكل ده طبعا كده احنا خلصنا منه على ما اعتقد وعلى ممرات برضه هنلحق الناس اللي عملت التجارب هننزل فيديوهات بتاعتها ان شاء الله والفيديوهات اللي بتحاول عشان نشتغل على الانجكتور وباذن الله خير هنشتغل عليه باذن الله وهانت يعني يا جماعه باذن واحد احد المهم الشكل الاول زي ما انتم شايفين اهو الشكل الاول عباره عن كان موجب بره ستانلس والسالب في النص الموجب اللي بره ده كان عامله هو ايه معزول على العربيه بس هي دي كانت زي الريسيفر تمام المهم ايه لو انت عندك اي مسورتين حديد مكربن يستحسن يبقى الحديد المكربن او ستانلس طبعا اي اتنين في اي هتعادل ما بينهم بكمية يعني البعد ده لو كبير قوي هتحط هيدروكسيد بوتاسيوم شوية هتكتر شوية بحيث ان هي ايه تعوض المسافة دي اهم حاجة ان هي كلها ما تسحبش اكتر من خمسة امبير بكل الظروف يعني انت تبقى حاسس عن العداد خمسة امبير ما تسحبش اكتر من كده تمام آه انا هرفق لكم فيديو دلوقتي انه وشرحه المبسط ان هو آه جزء من الفيديو طريقه شرح الواحد عملها بهاي تنشن يعني مثلا انت هتشغلها كده ما جابتش معاك نتيجه انت عايز تدور كامل بقى يعني هي كده المفروض هتوفر انت عايز تدور كامل كان هو طبعا بالنسبه للناس اللي مش شغاله في البرد ولا عارفه البرد آه انت بتجيب سبراتير قديم أربعة أربعة مش لازم تمانية للمواتير الكبيرة للصغير أربعة يعني أنت لو عندك موتورك أربعة سلندر هات سبراتير تاني أربعة وتحط عليه أي مروحة حطهم قصاد بعض وتخرج السبراتير هتجيب ال... هتجيب السلك اللي كان بيوصل في العربيات بيوصل لمتر ونص اللي هو ما بين المبينة والسبراتير في عربيات بيوصل فيها المتر المتر ونص وتلفه حواليها تمام هتفضل هتلفه كده حواليها لو عرفت تجيب اتنين ت... اتنين احسن وتوصلهم ببعض بس تحط الوشين في وش بعض عادي مش ه... الشارز هيتنقل هيبقى ايه زي تردد رايح جاي ما تقلقش مش هتح... مش هيحرق حاجه والدائره دي برضو شرحها مش يعني شرحها من من دايره واحد قايلها لواحد يعني كان حاططها في عربيه وكانت ماشيه اوريدي بال... بس هي مشكلتها انها هيبقى ايه هتعوز تعزلها شويه يعني لو هنحطها كمان في ماسوره كلها على بعضيها لان هي دي بتطلع تردادات عاليه لان ترداداتها بتعلى قوي لان ده بيشتغل كباستور يعتبر للاسبراتير فبيديك طبعا الغاز اللي طالع بيتقين وبتقدر توصله لدرجه الاحتراق العاديه اللي هي 450 سم اللي هي 450 متر في درجه الاحتراق بتاعته 450 متر في الثانيه من 350 ل 450 هو ده اللي بتقدر تتحكم فيه علشان يدور على الموتور العادي وانا ان شاء الله دلوقتي هسيب لكم ال المقطع الفيديو وان شاء الله الحلقة الجاية هنتكلم عن الشكل الاخير اللي هو ده اللي هو جوم معلش التسجيل قطع
هنتكلم عليها بس انا قبل ما نطفي نطفي في حاجة مهمة برضو عايز اوريها لكم اللي هو تأثير المجال المغناطيسي على المايه زي ما انتوا شايفين اي سي ويف زي ما انت شايف كده اهي ده عبارة عن سماعة على خرطوم هنا في سماعة صب فوق على خرطوم ده الاي سي ويف كده انت زي ما انت شايف تأثير المجال المغناطيسي على المايه بتقدر تشكل ازاي زي ما انتوا شايفين يعني الموضوع ده مهم جدا 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 زي ما انت شايف كده اهو التأثير واسيبكم مع الفيديو بتاع شرح الدايرة معلش يا جماعة انا يعني يعني انا محتاجين حد بس يترجم لوجه الله وانا هسيب هفتح التايم لاين مفتوع بحيث اي حد يخش يشوف الفيديو يعرف كلمتين يترجمهم لان هو الوقت والله يا جماعة مش مش مسعف خالص والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله. So how did your high voltage get into your electrodes then? I had an extension wire that ran around the whole unit to give it the radiation, but the wire that ran to that went round and round the whole unit there. You won't see it there because it ran around the unit. In other words, did it go just around this drum here, or what? Yeah, it wrapped clear around the drum. So like a well. It, the same wire that came off of the coil, I just put an extension on it and ran it around there so that radiation would go right through the unit. And then how often was the coil fired? What I had was an extra distributor. I had an extra distributor that had the coil that furnished the, uh, like I said, this has been 20 years ago. Sure, yeah. It furnishes the extra current that I put on the, on the anode over here. Mm -hmm. Anode meaning positive or negative? It was positive, and, and it, uh, every time that that thing turned over, it kicked eight pulses in there. And it, I had the thing timed, uh, I had the motor running fast enough that uh, you were getting a continuous pulse. Going to the positive wire. Going into the positive wire. Now, was this positive wire also hooked up to the battery positive, or was it just hooked up to that, to that distributor? Well, it's all the same because the the coil ran to the distributor, the the secondary distributor, and then ran to that anode there. And so what you had was the regular 12 volt battery on here, plus the uh, 70,000. So you did have the 12 volts also here. Yeah. Okay. And there was no feedback of that 70,000 volts going back to diode. I had a diode in there. I see. That kept it from going back. This, that 70,000 volts ran uh, not directly to this, but it ran through a, a spark. I had a, a spark. That means that the 12 volt with all the amps on the battery can't go back up the spark but the high voltage can go in on the low. Okay. And so what I did, I got high amperage and high voltage because I used the spark. So you had it jump. I had it jump. So that you couldn't go backwards on it. So it wouldn't go backwards, that's right. And you didn't have it do that inside the chamber, but outside the chamber, outside the prior chamber. to connecting to right. this. Uh -huh. right. And that gave you gas production sufficient to idle this truck. That's right. You said you were running that extra distributor using a fan motor on the previous yeah, visit. Yeah, same same thing as this thing, uh, little fan motor goes in here. And did you have to change the RPMs of it? Or uh, no, I just, just ran it. It really didn't matter. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. that exact science. No, no. All I want to do is pulse the current. And then all the eight wires uh, fed into the same junction on the thing, which gives you a pulse, uh, uh, a DC pulse. Uh, eight times whatever the RPM is, and okay. hey, it works. He constructed this to run his uh, Ford truck on electrolyzed water. This is what's called a flip flop. It has three 2N3055 transistors. It has a diode. Uh, it has uh, three capacitors and three resistors. And as we haven't analyzed the circuit, we aren't sure exactly what it is, but there's a potentiometer to adjust the frequency of the flip-flop. Now this unit drives this uh, 
This is a uh, very large heavy current silicon controlled rectifier. And it switches on and off the heavy current to the electrolyzer from the battery. And by using these two units together, you can create an on time and an off time of the current in the electrolyzer. And it's my understanding that he uses a 70,000 volt uh, spark coil, which is wrapped around the electrolyzer, and it is connected in such a way that it operates on the water when this uh, cell controlled rectifier opens. So you get high voltage, low voltage, high voltage, low voltage, alternating by this flip-flop. And this apparently gave him enough gas to idle his car, and the gas was completely generated by the alternator on his car. It did not, however, have enough power to move the car. It was just idling, and just barely able to idle. If he opened the uh, butterfly valve to try and speed it up, it would stall. So that's what this unit is. And it could be replaced now with what components? Well, nowadays you would use a, uh, a power MOSFET instead of this diode. And uh, this circuit you hear could be done with a 555 timer chip. And suitable driving transistors to drive a MOSFET. So it is not as hard to do today as it was in 1980 when uh, Donald built this. But uh, what about the air gap that he used? Well, the air gap was the uh, uh, where the spark the the. Uh, 70,000 volt spark uh, went to the water when this was turned off. So the 70,000 volt spark went through an air gap to the ter ter two terminals on the electrolyzer and was also wrapped around the electrolyzer. So you got both magnetic and plasma effect from that, that arc of the spark. So he was passing the arc through his chamber. The arc was not in the chamber, it was external to the chamber, but its effect was going in the chamber. No danger of exploding the hydrogen gas in the chamber by that? By the fact it's outside, it would not contact any of the gas. Well, if you had any discharge inside your electrolyzer, it would be destroyed by the explosion. So the only energy inside the chamber was 12 volts from the alternator? Yes, provided by this diode. And when the diode wasn't closed, the voltage from the spark plug of that arc also flowed through the electrolyzer. Well, the voltage would probably still be 12 volts, but it would fill in the period when this flip-flop was off. And the uh, there would be some spike put on the water by the fact that the spark flashed through the the gap that was external, and uh, it would uh, the plasma there would create some effect on the water itself. And so, the purpose of the gap? It's just to allow the spark plug coil to work. Because if you don't have a gap, you're shorting it out, and you won't get any current or any spark. So you have to have. A, adequate spark area similar to you have in the spark plug. So you could be achieving the radiolysis that Herman Anderson speaks of by using this kind of discharge of what he calls a corona discharge. Uh, I guess some people would call that radiologists. It's uh, really just a spark between two contacts, an open air spark. Except that you're wrapping the cylinder, the chamber, yeah, the electrolyte chamber. Spark plug wires wrapped around the chamber so the current in that spark also produces a magnetic field in the fluid. But simply having a long spark plug wire wrapped around the chamber 
would cause the causes a magnetic effect. So you basically want to wrap a spark plug wire around a chamber and terminate it with a spark plug, maybe just taped or strapped. Well, I don't say you want to do that, but that's what Donald Brisby did, and it appeared to work. So the end of the line is the spark plug, and in between the spark plug and the coil, you wrap it around the chamber. Is that the end?